Hello folks, today we're taking a look at a PC with some serious power under the hood. Built to handle productivity, gaming and multimedia whilst being sleek and unobtrusive. Oh, you think I'm talking about this? Nope, just wait. That's just for show. We're talking about this. Yes folks, today we have another mini PC in our hands to test out. This time round though, it's promising to be a really rather special little unit. That's because this is the Geekom IT15 AI Mini PC. It's the latest offering by the company with some incredible specs all concealed within this tiny little unit. I'm talking Intel Core Ultra 9 285H, 32 gigabits of DDR5 RAM, two terabyte NVMe storage, to name a few. We'll expand more on the specs in more detail very shortly. First of all, for the sake of a video, let's do our usual unboxing experience. The box looks nice and attractive in a matte black all around design with the words IT series across the center and Geekom at the top. The sides have some nice silhouettes and the rear shows the specs of a unit in the box. Open it up and you get the mini PC itself. It's a super tiny, sleek little box that comes in a really nice matte black design. It's not too over the top, which is quite nice in my opinion. There's loads of I.O. ports and ventilation all around the unit and it feels incredibly durable and strong with a metal housing. It comes in at just 117mm by 112mm and 49.2mm tall. It's got a little bit of heft to it as well, with the weight coming in at 595 grams, which coincidentally is less weight than its much lower specs relative, the Geekom A5 2025 edition we recently reviewed. There's loads of I.O. ports available on the Geekom IT15 II, starting with the front. We have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, capable of up to 10 gigabit speed. The first one is power delivery enabled too for power and devices. A combined 3.5 millimeter audio and mic port, and then finally the power button. On the side, we have a machine cut ventilation panel for airflow and a Kensington lock for securing it into place in your office. The opposite side looks very similar. However, this time we have a Gen 4 SD card slot for super fast data transfer to and from your memory cards. Finally, we get the busy side, starting with a 19 volt DC power port, a HDMI 2 port, an ultra high speed 40 gigabits USB Type C Gen 4 ports with power delivery, a 2.5 gig Ethernet port, a USB 2 Type A, and a USB 3.2 Type A. Finally, we have a second HDMI 2 port and an additional USB Type C Gen 4 port. Above all of this is the ventilation chamber that the warm air from the system is dispensed out of by a tiny little fan. Going back to the box, you get a thick foam cutout sheet that holds the unit into place. Underneath this is the little user manual and also a little thank you note from Geekom. A HDMI 2 cable and a relatively large 120 watt power brick. There's some mounting screws and a mounting backplate to allow you to mount it onto the wall or to the back of your monitor. And then finally, you have the power lead itself. The Geekom IT15 AI model is the latest in their premium mini PC lineup, the IT12 and the IT13 coming before it. All the models generally have higher end Intel chipsets in them depending on the year and release and obviously the generations available. And the IT15 we have just fits right in with that setup. The IT15 is packed with some really high end components with options for expansion down the line too. First, let's talk specs. The Core Ultra 9285H is an Arrow Lake H series processor built on Intel's new process node, TSMC N3B for those keeping score. It boasts a formidable 16 cores and 16 threads. But here's where it gets interesting, but not just any cores. We're looking at a hybrid architecture featuring six performance cores or P cores. These are the heavy hitters designed for demanding single threaded and based workloads with a max turbo frequency of up to 5.4 gigahertz. Eight efficiency cores, or E cores, these handle background tasks and multi-threaded workloads with excellent power efficiency, reaching up to 4.5 gigahertz. And then finally, we have two lower power efficient cores, or LPE cores, tucked away on a separate low power island. These are dedicated to extremely light workloads like video playback, basically at maximizing the battery life. It is what is classed as a mobile processor, primarily aimed at use in high-end laptops or in all-in-one systems, but don't let it fool you with a mobile tag as it certainly is still a powerhouse. The Core Ultra 9 285H also has a little feature that makes the IT15 a formidable gaming and multimedia device too, 
and that's the integrated Intel Arc Graphics 140T chipset. The 140T is a powerful integrated GPU built into 2025's Arrow Lake H mobile processors, offering a significant performance leap over previous Intel iGPUs, featuring 1024 shader cores, ray tracing support, and AI acceleration. It delivers smooth 1080p gaming in esports titles and playable performance in modern AAA games with adjusted settings, with a boost clock up to 2.35 GHz and a 35W power envelope. The 140T rivals entry-level discrete GPUs like the RTX 3050 laptop, making it a solid choice for gamers, creators and power users who want strong graphics without a dedicated GPU, an ideal addition to the Geekom IT15. There's plenty of RAM available too with this unit, featuring an impressive 32GB of DDR5 5600MHz thread Sodim dual channel RAM. This can be upgraded to up to 64GB if you really need that additional power and storage. We have a 2TB Gen 4 NVMe drive included too, for plenty of fast access to your files and data transfer rates. You can even upgrade this too, which I'll show you how very shortly. It features Wi-Fi 7 for super fast and reliable Wi-Fi connections, Bluetooth 5.4 tech to connect any Bluetooth devices, such as speakers, controllers, or more. The 2.5 gig RJ45 found at Revere can also support up to 2,500 megabit speed, so connectivity is no issue. If you do wish to upgrade the components inside, you simply need to remove these four screws at the bottom that are found within the rubber feet. Remove the base plate and you have access to the internals. On the back plate itself, you have a mount for a two and a half inch drive with a SATA connector cable for up to an additional two terabytes of space. The RAM you can see here is currently fully occupied with the aforementioned 32 gigabits of DDR5, but these can be removed and replaced for larger volume modules. Here we see the included two terabyte NVMe Gen 4 drive and this is a full-size 2280 drive, and right next to it is an empty NVMe slot. However, this one only supports a 2242 drive, so be sure to note that if you want to upgrade it. So a very impressive little specifications list for such a teeny tiny unit. It's definitely a powerhouse of a little unit. The compact size is ideal for hiding it away, mounting it to the back of your monitor, or even slipping it into a bag to take it away with you on your travels. Hook it up to your hotel TV and you have a home PC on the go. However, it's all well and good boasting all of these specs. The important thing is how does it function? Well, I put the Geekom IT15 through some pretty extensive tests, benchmarks and gameplay to find out for myself and the results are pretty impressive. First of all, I ran some benchmark suites to test that CPU and integrated graphics combo and see just how well they perform. The first test was Cinebench, an old favourite of hardware testers that focuses on each individual core of a CPU to give it a score that is ranked in a scoring system, showing how well it performs to other processors of its criteria range. The IT15 hit a CPU multi-score of 871 points, which is pretty respectable. That puts it slightly above the Ryzen 7 5800X and the Threadripper 1950X, which are both non-mobile chips. The single core score was 132 points, which actually put it right at the top of the leaderboards, far exceeding Apple's M1 Max and Ultra and pretty much everything else in its class too. A fine example of that newer N3B process in action. The next test in question is 3D Mark, and for this I ran two tests that were best suited for this specific setup. First was Night Raid, because it is tweaked for integrated graphics, and the IT15 scored very highly here, with a mighty 32256 combined score, a 38264 graphics score, and a 17070 CPU score. We then ran the traditional Time Spy test. This one, however, is not really configured to test integrated graphics as it is. It's more for a system with a standalone GPU added to it. With that said, it's still got a half-decent 4,223 overall score, a 3794 graphics score, and an 11767 CPU score. To be fair, it's not a bad result at all for an integrated graphics chipset. Next, I ran a crystal disk map test to see how that Gen 4 NVMe performs. No use in having a top-end processor if your drive can't cope with the speeds needed for gameplay and data transfer. Thankfully, the scores were pretty respectable, 
with a 4K plus read and a 3.6K plus write score when tested using a 1GB file size. So the Geekom IT15 scores pretty well on its benchmark tests. In fact, it's very much at the top end of the scoring side, which is very nice to see. Naturally, it's now time to test the IT15 at, at its gameplay functionality. CSGO 2 was the first game on test. I ran it at 1080p, 1440 and 4K to get my findings, and as you can see, the results are actually surprisingly decent. All tests were running on medium settings to give a more accurate result in different resolutions. At 1080p, we hit a max of 125 FPS, with a 1% low of 78. 1440p lowered it, but not terribly so, with a high of 112 and 1% low of 46. 4K was naturally more demanding with a high of 67 and a low of just 12. The game was most definitely playable on 1080p and even 1440. Fortnite was next, same medium settings across all resolutions again, and it was a similar result, although admittedly, this game played much smoother all around. 1080p gave 114 high and low of 85. 1440 gave a 96 high and 74 low, and 4K was sitting comfortably around 77 high and 34 low. For the third game, I ran Asphalt Legends Unite. This is a game I find myself playing quite a lot. It's not an immensely demanding game, but does a great job of showcasing the rendering capabilities of the Core Ultra 9 285H. This one had a similar result throughout, once again. 1080p had 111 high, 88 low. 1440 had 108 high and 76 low, whilst 4K had an 85 high and 52 low. Asphalt was easy, the most fluid game of a lot, but nonetheless they were all very playable. Considering the ARC 140T integrated graphics heavily promotes that it'll play 1080p games seamlessly, it managed to play 4K games pretty well too, with very good low 1% FPS scores too. Naturally, on 1080p, I could have pushed the graphics qualities a little bit higher to get a better image, and I'm confident in saying it would have easily handled them too with 60 FPS plus, which is ideally the sweet spot for most games. It's definitely left me very impressed. Now, for the final test of the Geekom IT15, I set to doing some rendering on it. Rendering photos via Photoshop was a breeze with no issues whatsoever. It handled everything without hesitation at all. The real test was video rendering, and for this, I used DaVinci Resolve. I found that rendering worked very well, adding all the images and media files was simple. Inserting them into the timeline, doing all the cuts, adjustments, edits, movements, and overlays worked fantastically well. Even adding multiple layers didn't seem to phase it. It did start to have the occasional hiccup when I was playing back some sped up footage, but then even my main editing rig sometimes struggles with that. Setting the file to render was also relatively quick. Not as quick as the likes of a system with a dedicated graphics card, but certainly not slow. I managed to render a heavily edited 4K clip with music and colour corrections in just 12 minutes and 36 seconds, which in my opinion is very respectable. And that wraps up my testing of the Geekom IT15 AI Mini PC. And overall, I've been left very, very impressed. It's pretty much handled anything I threw at it with relative ease, and it never really stuttered or moaned once. To say that it can perform the way that it does in a unit that's a little bit bigger than my fist is nothing short of fantastic. Display-wise, it technically will support 8K resolution through the chipset and onboard graphics, but the HDMI 2 ports will limit that. You could power the display via Type-C if you need to for the extra data power to power an 8K image. However, it will easily run dual 4K displays without hesitation too, at up to 100Hz from the dual HDMI ports. It's a little bit on the expensive side at around a £1,000 price mark. But when you take into consideration what you get for that price point in such a compact and capable carcass, then I'm going to probably strongly argue that it's actually a pretty good value setup. They do sell a slightly lower specs version of the IT15 with a Core Ultra 5 225H, 32GB of RAM and just 1TB NVMe. That can be picked up for about £250 cheaper than this one, at the expense of a few cores and a slightly lower specs Intel Arc 130T integrated graphics, although it will probably still be pretty capable. There will, as always, be a link to get your hands on one for yourself. Go check it out, and if you're in the market, for a very powerful little machine, but you're stuck for free space, 
then this could be the perfect solution for you. If this is how things are now in the mini PC sector, then I'm looking forward to what's to come. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments what games you would play on this little unit. It really does prove the age old theory that big things come in small packages. And that's it from me for now. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.